Hi, this is Dr. S. P. Harsa from Mechanical and Industrial Department, IIT Roorkee. I am going to deliver my lecture 25 on the course of the strength of materials and this course is developed under the, under, under the scheme of national programs on technological enhanced learning. Prior to start this lecture, I would like to refresh the concept on the, uh, this uh, uh, BMD and SFD that means the, uh, this banding moment diagram and the shear force diagram on a beam because you see in this lecture also we are going to discuss again you know like that actually if uh, there are the interaction of the different loads are there then how we can draw these two diagrams the shear force as well as the bending moment diagrams. So you see in the previous lecture we discussed you know like the four different cases of that and as we told that you know like as we discussed that if a beam is there and you know like there are vertical forces acting on uh, towards the downward direction then always it depends on what kind of uh, you know like uh, the supports are there the reaction forces are dominating that means if we have a cantilever beam then definitely you know like one end is free and one end is uh, you know like the rigidly fixed at a particular point then at the, this particular the uh, the junction where these two you know like uh, the beam as well as uh, this support are joining <coughs> the maximum bending is there at that particular point and we discuss that point so in in the in that we found that in the first case which we discussed that if we have a cantilever beam and a point load is there at the extreme end of this cantilever then shear force is nothing but you know like because this cantilever this uh, on, on this particular cantilever the uh, force applied force is going downward direction and the reactions are going on the up vertical upward and due to the sign notations which we you know like uh, uh, took in the previous cases also our shear force is in negative way so f is equals to uh, minus w and, and we got uh, the rectangular portion with the minus w okay with the shear force and then we found that you know you know like that if we have this, this similar kind of uh, arrangement and if you want to find it out the bending moment then it was zero you know like uh, at that particular point and it is simply going in a uh, this uh, uh, linear uh, relation f equals to minus w into x or f equals to minus w into l if we are taking the entire length of a beam and we found that it, it has a linear relationship so we have a triangular uh, form of this bending moment diagram and at the maximum uh, as I told you that the wherever the junction is there the maximum bending moment was minus w into l. So this was the first case and then we changed the uh, support so if we have a simply supported beam that means you see this uh, beam is supported at both ends by a pin joint and if we apply the uh, w load at the exactly midpoint of the beam and then we found that the reactions were wl by 2 and wl by 2 and then corresponding you know like uh, those uh, shear force diagrams were there so if we were taking uh, the right at uh, the left portion of uh, this kind of beam then we had you know like a rectangular form which is w in a positive way and if you are taking the right hand side which is the negative portion because of the sign convention of the shear force and exactly the, the but the amount is exactly same as we have taken in the first one so you see here what we have in that kind of thing we have minus w by 2 on this one in shear force diagram going up to the middle ports and then you know like it simply abrupt changes there because of the applied load and it goes up to a minus w by 2 so you see plus w by 2 to minus w by 2 there is a straight reduction of w and then you see at the end we have the same minus w by 2 so these two triangles were showing that actually how the shear force is changing from positive to negative and then corresponding you know like the shear uh, this bending moment diagram was there that actually starting from at both reactions it was zero and it was maximum at the middle point so you see it is just like double WL, wl by 2 so it is uh, this uh, just in a tri the exact perfectly the triangle is there zero and then it is just peak is there at the middle point so these two cases which we discussed uh, you know like in the previous lectures when the point loads are there and then then you see we simply change the type of loading that means if we had you know, like the uh, this uniformly distributed load all across uh, this uh, length uh, the beam of length then we found that it is not you see as far as the shear force is concerned because now the load is not point load it is you see distributed over a, across our uh, particular length or the entire length of a beam then the total uh, length uh, the total load is w into l so now you see we found that the either if we have a simply supported beam or a cantilever then altogether it's a different kind of uh, shear force and bending moment diagram is so and uh, we observed that as far as the shear force is concerned there won't be an issue because you see you know like uh, it is changing from the middle portion and then it is you know like the symmetric is there means positive to negative change is there in both the cases but uh, this uh, bending moment diagram is concerned it is absolutely you see now the relation is not linear as we have observed in the previous two cases when the point load was there now this time 
we have absolutely you know like the curvature the parabolic relation is there because the square term is coming and we can say that it is nothing but the x square equals to 4 a y or whatever you see this kind of a parabola will come in that picture uh, in that picture so both of the either we see we have a cantilever beam and udl is there or if we have a simply supported beam and udl is there on that particular we had you see you know like uh, even if you have simply supported beam then the shear force diagram is just starting from wl you know like and then it is going to minus wl so what we have you see we have a, a point where there is a abrupt change is there and at that point we observe that the maximum bending moment is occurring or you see if you draw the bending moment then starting from these two zero point and it is meeting like at this point so wherever the shear force is changing from you know like positive to negative at that junction we have the maximum bending point and we can simply you know like observe that if uh, you know like mathematically that if we have the shear force f which is equals to dm by dx we can simply keep either f equals to 0 or f equals to constant there is you know like the corresponding changes are there in the uh, this uh, bending moment or we can say you see we already you know like uh, discussed about that if we have this load w which is equals to df by dx is also equals to d2m by dx square so this relation is perfectly okay if you, for all those four you know like the cases which we discussed and then you see like in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss that apart from these point load or udl on a, this cantilever beam or simply supported beam now you see if we you know like uh, put the couple or if we change you see you know like not only the uh, couple but if we have udl and the combination with the point load then what will happen what kind of interaction is there in between you know like uh, these kind of loadings plus uh, what is the resultant effect is there on shear force as well as the bending moment uh, and then we would like to draw those diagrams so that actually we can easily visualize that okay these kind of interactions are there and we can get uh, this kind of uh, shear force as well as the bending moment diagram. So you see in this lecture we are starting from the couple itself. So here you see when a beam is subjected to a couple the shear force and the bending moment diagrams may be drawn exactly you know like in the same fashion as we discussed for the four cases where you see the point loads were there or udl uh, was there in a simply supported beam and a cantilever so here you see we have a simply supported beam and you know like at these two jung these two uh, extreme corner we have the pin joints and at the middle of the portion we have a couple so couple is acting so due to the couple always there is a kind of uh, shearing is occur at some you know like uh, all across uh, this entire length of beam and also there is a bending moment is there because you see when you apply the couple a kind of a twisting is there from both of the ends and since we have a support so how the reaction will you know like uh, react on this kind of couple okay so we just want to balance those things because you know like whatever the analysis which we are going to discuss or we discussed in the previous cases also it is just for uh, the equilibrium position of the beam under the application of load so come to the point you see you can see on the figure that we have you see this uh, you know like a b length uh, of the beam a simply supported beam is there so at these two extreme corners we have a supports pin joints are there and you see you know like at the middle of the portion we have a bending moment which has a magnitude of m so you see here what we have we have a distance uh, from left hand is a when the uh, uh, this uh, point of uh, application of this bending moment is and from right hand we have a distance of b now you see we would like to see that how these you know like uh, uh, the moment will uh, will be reacted at these reaction points so we found that uh, just uh, you know like uh, assume that we have the summation of uh, bending moment at this particular point a is zero so after applying that particular condition if you just you know like uh, when, when we know that actually at this this is my junction point and uh, whatever the moment is coming from it is coming from middle um, uh, at distance a or at distance uh, a plus b means the entire length you see so how these you know like uh, the moment will act uh, on this particular point so according to that uh, we can starting from the, if we have a reaction at this particular point a it is r1 and at this particular point uh, b is r2 so we can straightway start from that r2 into l l is the thing but you see you know like as we discussed a plus b so r into l plus and this you know like because of that since we are applying this moment so the reaction will be vertically upward so even this r2 will also act in a vertical direction and since you see if you are saying that this is moment so entire when i am saying that this is my junction and it is starting from that so the total you know like the moment will be from this reaction is uh, r1 into this r2 uh, r2 into l plus this moment m which is equals to 0 so we can calculate this r2 is equals to minus m by l and now you see since if you are saying that the total 
there is no force application is there only the moment is there so the total force r1 plus r2 is to be zero so you see you know like you can simply keep this r2 which is minus m by l so we have you know like r1 which is equals to minus r2 so we have r1 is also m by l so now what we have we have reaction forces at uh, this point a and point b so uh, at this particular point a we have the reaction uh, minus uh, uh, this uh, plus m by l and we have the reaction at point b which is r2 is minus m by l so we're corresponding to that you see we can simply find it out that what will be the shear force is there in that case is so you see if you want to draw the shear force diagram we can easily get those things by you know like this diagram that we have the center line okay or which this shearing is occur and then at this particular point at one point of time you see what we have we have you know like the reaction is going in upward direction and the due to moment it is just going towards that direction that means you see we have a positive one so plus m by l is there and you see in uh, other direction it is going in upward direction and you due to that it is going in a uh, vertical direction since there is no force relation is there straight at one point you see we have a moment and these two forces are just going upward direction so you can say that the shear force is exactly equals to this at this particular point we have plus m by l at this point we have minus m by l and it has a rectangular shape altogether but there is an addition of a moment at these two junction because you see at these two reactions always you see we need to assume or we have to calculate if you calculate then definitely will get that wherever the pin joints are there there is no moment is there all those things because you see we always take the moment from that even if you see you know like we just take an example of a door that always you see wherever the junction is there of a door where uh, the wall is attachment is there if you apply the moment at the near to this particular junction or if you just uh, go towards outward direction you'll find that the whatever the force into the distance as you increase the distance the moment will increase so similarly you see but if you apply the load wherever the junction is there there is no moment will take place even in that door or any of the cases so here also we can apply the similar concept to get the bending moment so we found that at these two junctions where the pin joints are there always these are the reference points so there is no you know moment bending moment is there at these particular two points so starting from these two points we have the zero zero now as we move further we, we just to focus on that whether it is going in a sagging or whether it is going in a hogging way so if you just uh, analyze those things for left hand portion then you'll find that this will be you know like as you apply the moment so it is acting in this way and due to that you see it will also try to tend in this way so what we have we have a positive it is simply a sagging motion is there at this particular left hand portion so we have a positive bending moment but it is zero at this particular portion and it is maximum at a middle point and this maximum bending moment is m by m because it is a distance of a so m by l which is a force into distance is l so m by l into a so this is the maximum bending moment will come at this particular junction which has this particular magnitude so it is always in since it is a point load is there or we can say due to this moment always the loads are not in a uniformly distributed kind of that so we have a triangular shape of that of bending moment because of the linear relation m into a by l so this is starting from zero and goes up to the maximum gives a triangular shape of a bending moment but if you go to the left hand portion again you see as we discussed that since it is a pin uh, pin joint is there the starting point so starting uh, point is always zero in terms of bending moment and now you see this bending will you know like the middle portion if i am talking it is always tend to move this you know like uh, this uh, beam in a lower direction and to balance this sagging always the other half we have a uh, this uh, portion uh, hogging portion is there so starting from zero and we have m b into l so this kind of because at this particular point we have a moment additional moment is applied so this will uh, there is abrupt changes there from you know like m a by l to m b by l because you see the point of application of these distances are different at this particular point a and it, at this particular point b is there so we can say that uh, starting from this point to this point the uh, variation is from this m a uh, in, by l to you know like dropping is there m b by a uh, m b by l and it is going to the zero so this is this kind of you know like uh, the bending moment will come in this uh, kind of beam where you see the uh, load load loading conditions are of uh, couple is there 
So now you see, you know, like as far as the couples are concerned, it doesn't, you know, like only it is contributing much in uh, bending moment because you see, you know, like whenever the bending uh, bending moments are concerning, then always you see at, at what point you see you are applying uh, the moment, additional moment is there. So, you know, like we can simply include those kind of things. But when the eccentric loading is there, that means you see, you know, like when a beam is subjected to a kind of not exactly at a middle point or some point, you see eccentricity is there, the eccentric loads are always changed into the couple or oblique you can say this force as, ca uh, uh, as the case may be in you know like uh, the example which we are going to discuss we will find that uh, whenever you see if I am saying that they, these points you know like at the feasible things are there means if you have a beam and these points are exactly on the middle portion there is no eccentricity will come but uh, if there is eccentricity is there due to the eccentric load because you see there is uh, how much eccentricity is there and what is the magnitude is there the total couple will come from the distance eccentric distance into the uh, magnitude of that load so this will give you a couple and due to that couple you see you know like the similar kind of observations will come as we discussed in just you know like in the previous case so in uh, you know like one of the example we can say that the 20 kilo newton which i am going to show you a 20 kilo newton load is acting at a distance of let us say 0.2 millimeter maybe you know like you can convert this thing in you know like this 20 kilo newton and a couple so this point load is there so there is the impact of this point load of 20 kilo newton plus you see whatever you see the you know like uh, these eccentricity is there this will induce a special kind of couple and the total magnitude of that couple is 20 into 0.2 that is 2 kilo newton meter so now you see you know like uh, we can say that uh, it has a combination so if if any eccentricity is there in an object in, in, on, on this particular beam you can simply take that particular portion find out that how much distance of the eccentric dist means uh, this due to eccentricity how much distance is there and then you know like whatever the magnitude is there this is additional couple is there apart from whatever the point loads are there or we can say that you know if we have you know like a 10 kilo newton force which is acting at an angle of 30 degree means it is not exactly a middle portion you know like just like use the vertical forces are if it is acting at a 30 degree maybe you know like we need to resolve in two main forces one in a horizontal and one is in a vertical way and the rest of procedure for drawing shear force and bending moment will be same the meaning is pretty simple for these kind of thing that uh, whenever we are thinking that if there is a load which is eccentric uh, there is you know like the two component which has to be considered for analysis one is a point load which has the same magnitude which is acting uh, by point load and other one is uh, the load whatever magnitude is there of the concentrated into how much distance you see which has displaced from the center point so eccentric distance so it will induce a couple so these two uh, these two component has to be considered for analysis while you see if we are saying that the load is there which is not vertical which is at a, some angle is there so you need to resolve these two you know like forces in a cos theta r cos theta and uh, r sin theta let us say and then you see you need to consider for our analysis that if vertical forces are there then how these vertical forces are acting and if if horizontal forces are there then how these resistance resistive forces are coming due to these uh, this angled load so these two special cases were there so we can say that you know like as we discussed that we have you see now like the simply supported beam and instead of you know like the point load what we have we have you see this is a kind of nature where we have a handle so if we are keeping a load on the extreme end of a handle then what will happen since we are keeping at this particular point uh, this point so there is a vertical load is there so we need to assume that there is a vertical load which has a magnitude of 20 kilo newton plus there is a couple or we can say there is a moment which will tend to move this uh, you know like the beam into this direction or we can say the clockwise direction because what we are we are applying this load in this direction so the bending moment will be like that or we can say the moment is there in this way and the load is there so if you take the resultant of this this, if you if you are considering this case then you will be ending up with two uh, you know like the component as i told you one with the magnitude of this load so it has a 20 kilo newton and one one because of this uh, 20 kilo newton plus this uh, handle distance because of that only the uh, bending is uh, this bending moment is coming so the moment is of uh, this into this so we have 4 kilo newton meter so these two components has to be considered for analysis otherwise your result is whatever the analysis is coming due to only you know like this load will be of a failure 
and then you see the other case which we discussed that if we have an angle of uh, let us if we, uh, the load which is of any magnitude is applying at an uh, angle then you see you know like you need to resolve that 10 cos theta which is in this direction and 10 sin theta which is of a vertical direction. So you see you know like uh, once you resolve those things you have the both component at this particular point you have you know like the 10 cos this is 10 sin theta this is 10 uh, cos theta and you resolve then you will have 5 and 8.7 at this particular point. So you see while analysis we cannot ignore the any of the force component because you see the total resolution of these forces is always giving in the two component and then you see you need to consider for analysis that if we are talking about the vertical parts then these vertical forces are if we are talking about the horizontal part then these horizontal forces are coming into the picture for our analysis part. So, this was a new case you see where these two special uh, things were there one is the eccentricity and one is the resolution of this force. Then you see you know like uh, we have a different kind of situation where both uh, like point load as well as the unit load or if we have you know like uh, the uniformly distributed load and the two types of uniformly distributed loads are there that means if we have a combination part if the loading changes or we can say there is an abrupt change of loading is there then what will happen how the beam will react on that part and what will be the net changes there in the shear force as well as the bending moment diagram we are going to discuss. So, when there is abrupt change of loading or load changes the problem may be tackled in a symmetric way just total you know like uh, means you know like the same uh, system system is there there is no change in that way whatever the symmetricity which we have assumed again the same systematic uh, pattern is there in that way also. So, if you consider a cantilever now just take an example of a 3 meter let us say the length and it carries a uniformly distributed load of 2 kilo Newton per meter that means you see we have a cantilever beam one end is fixed one end is free and on that over a entire length of this uh, beam period we have you know like uh, this uh, UDL is there which is which has a magnitude of 2 kilo Newton per meter and also apart from means apart from this we have a concentrated load of a magnitude of 2 kilo Newton uh, uh, at the free end and 4 kilo Newton 4 kilo Newton uh, at 2 meters from a fixed end that means you see we have you no know, like just try to visualize this situation we have a cantilever beam this is a rigid part and this is you see the free part or the entire length of this we have you know like the UDL which has a magnitude of 2 kilo Newton per meter and then you see what we have we have a concentrated load 2 kilo Newton at a free end. So, there is a you know like 2 kilo Newton per meter is a UDL at this point and additionally there is a 2 kilo Newton of this plus we have you see the 4 kilo Newton which is you see 2 meter apart from this fixed end. So, from this or we can say 1 meter from this free end we have one more additional load. So, the, the, uh, the magnitude of that load is 4 kilo Newton. The shearing force and bending moment diagram are required to be drawn and the state of maximum value of the shearing force and bending moments are always required for that. We need to check it out that actually how these you know like because of these three different uh, 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 load conditions that means one is UDL and one, two are concentrated load at different positions what the interaction is there of these forces of this uh, you know like the loads and then due to this interaction actually how they will impact on the shear force as well as the bending moment. So, here it is you see we discussed that the same bending you know like this is the beam is there at this the cantilever is there this is a UDL of 2 kilo Newton per meter and then you see we have at this particular extreme corner we have a 2 kilo Newton and at this you know like from 2 meter from this distance or 1 meter from this distance we have a 4 kilo Newton. But after visualizing these things again we need to think that actually how we can start. So, as we told you see you know like uh, you need to cut the section. So, we cut the section at this and this has a distance of x at this this y y distance. So, what we need to do here once we know that these distances that that means this is a total 3 meter this is total x this is 1 meter we will start that you know like uh, that if we have a cross section x x which has a distance of x from free end then what will be the shear force because we are starting from the shear force only. So, we have a shear force at you know like the x x distance any distance x is minus 2 because you see it will it is coming in the minus direction this this force is there. So, minus 2 minus 2 of x for a uh, distance which is less than uh, you know like l but greater than 0 that means you see starting from the free end this we have a distance at some places you see but less than this distance l or we can say the 3 meter. So, now you see at this particular you know like the shear force variation is what it is starting because this is the main contribution at the free end only we are starting from the free end. So, be careful at that only we are we, 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 we need to assume this one 
so minus 2 because of these and minus 2 into x because we are just talking about the x distance so the total load from this udl is coming as a 2x so the uh, interaction of these two forces point load as well as the udl will be ending up uh, at minus 2 into minus uh, minus 2 minus 2 x so you see now we if we, since x is the variation only so we are starting from x equals to 0 so when we are talking about x equals to 0 there is you see both 2 minus 2 so you see what we have at the point a where 0 is there the shear force is only minus 2 kilonewton because 2x is gone so only the contribution is there due to you know like uh, this uh, force loading point load and udl is coming only due to this uh, point load and it has a magnitude of 2 kilonewton and since the, uh, the sign convention says that it is ending up in this particular direction so we have minus 2 kilonewton at point a free end but if we are going up to x equals to l that means you see you know like if you are going for x equals to 1 distance where the additional load is there so only we are ending up this x is at equals to 1 so you see we have 2 minus 2 into 2 into 1 so you see we have a minus 4 kilonewton so starting from point a to go to the point c or c means you see where the 4 kilonewton additional load is there will be ending up in a shear force at minus 2 kilonewton into minus 4 newton then you see you know, like shear force at point C that means when x equals to 1 is there same concentrated load minus 4 is there. So we can simply you know, like induce this additional one because this minus 4 is coming due to this 2 kilonewton and 2 kilonewton per meter. But now you see at the C point when we are saying that uh, you know like the, there is additional contribution is there from my, uh, this point 4 kilonewton. So you need to add that force and we will be ending up at minus 2 into you know like minus 4 and minus 2 into 1. So we have you know like the total load is minus 8 kilonewton and that is the concentrated part is there. So one has to be very clear that we need to consider the inducing effect of the previous load plus uh, there is adrupt changes there then how this adrupt change will come into the picture when we are adding those uh, loads because as we discussed in the previous cases also that uh, in a shear force only what we are doing we are algebraic we are simply doing algebraic sum of these loaded so you see here what we have we have a combination here that we have a udl plus we have these two point load so if we are talking about a point a then only there is a load contribution is there from point as well as a udl but at point a only as we found that uh, since x equals to 0 so the main contribution or the total contribution is coming due to this point load but if we move to point c then there is a contribution from minus the 2 kilonewton load at extreme end 2 kilonewton people uh, 2 kilonewton per meter load also up to the distance 1 and additional 4 kilonewton is there and due to that there is a drift change will come so at point c we can say that the total resultant force will be of minus 8 kilonewton so now you see you know like uh, if we are going beyond that point now we have discussed up to 1 meter only so if we are going up to let us say y y distance then what will happen you see what we have we have at this point you know like the 2 kilonewton load and uh, you see at this point we have you know like the total resultant is minus 8 kilonewton now beyond that you see here we have you know like the total resultant is coming due to four, 2 and 4 kilonewton plus due to this 2 kilonewton meter and it will be ending up and there is no additional component is there of a force in this entire length of that that means the, uh, that means in this 2 meter of this particular uh, beam so we will be ending up that actually whatever the combination is coming due to these or we can say whatever the resultant force is coming due to these three forces they will be you know, like uh, contributing equally up to this point and there is no adrupt change will be there in that part. So shear force at y y section if you are talking the same was there you see minus 2 because of the 2 kilonewton as I told you minus 2 into x distance because of the udl because 2 kilonewton meter is there so the x distance so 2 kilo, uh, minus 2 into the total x distance and minus 4 because of the additional 4 kilonewton load was there in the downward direction so you see this is valid up to uh, uh, you know like uh, x for uh, greater than 1 because up to 1 we have discussed and less than 3 so in between this reason when there is no additional part is there this is a valid equation and now if you are keeping that at x equals to 1 the same c point is there and we discussed that it is at minus 8 kilonewton and if you are talking about at, at x equals to 3 that means the extreme junction corner we have you see minus 2 into minus 4 into uh, minus 2 into 3 so we have the total minus 12 kilonewton that means you see the additional uh, minus 4 kilonewton is coming because of the udl part 
because you know like what we have we have the 2 meter distance is left and 2 kN meter 2 kN per meter is the intensity is there of a UDL so the uh, entire length is 2 meter into um, uh, 2 is there and it is going downward direction so minus 4 additionally component is there beyond point C that that's why you see we have the total shear force at uh, the extreme corner is minus 12. So now you see you know like we can simply draw this shear force diagram for this kind of loading of a cantilever beam that starting from minus 2. So this is minus 2 then at this point we have a minus 8. So right from 0 to minus 2 at the beginning then minus 2 to minus 8 and then you see you know like we have the total change is there of this uh, minus 8 is there because of the 4 and 4. So this kind of uh, the linear uh, you know like uh, the component will come. So this 4 and this 4 makes the total 8 and this 8 and this is the total 12 Newton is there in the minus term. So this is the negative component all along and we have a kind of shear force diagram for this. And now you see if you focus on the bending moment because you see here in as far as the bending moment is concerned we need to write that actually how this uh, you know like the interaction will be coming because of the additional component of these loads uh, loads are. So for that you see we need to write the bending moment equation at again you know like by considering the xx action. So you see here if we just again cut the xx action of this kind of loading for just you know starting from the free end where point load is there and the UDL is there then what we have we have the moment due to the point load is minus 2 into x distance so minus 2 into x then because of the UDL. So UDL the total uh, force component is minus 2 into x and where it is applying always applying at the center distance so x by 2. So the total uh, you know like the visualization of the component is minus 2 into x into x by 2. So we have you see you know like the total equation is minus 2x minus 2x square by 2 or we can say the x square. So now you see if you are keeping the values of x for different different reasons we have at x equals to 0 total bending moment is 0 because it depends on absolutely the x distance and if you are saying that if you are going up to the 1 x equals to 1 meter we have the total uh, bending moment is minus 3 kN meter. So that means you see you know like starting from 0 because of you know like the free end going up to minus 3 kN meter because it you know like it will just uh, going in a, a shape of a hogging so obviously it is in the negative direction is there and then you see now go beyond you know like this 1 meter that means you see at a C, uh, C point what will be there so again you see cut the section of y y and C the feasibility. So for that you see what we are doing here for up to distance of y y since the distance is x so the contributions are coming from minus 2 kilo this uh, 2 kilo newton which is uh, going up down downward direction contribution is coming from 4, 4 kilo newton always going downward and contribution is coming from 2 kilo newton per meter because of the udl so you see we have a bending moment at y y direction at y y distance is minus 2 into x because of the point load minus 2x into x by 2 because of the UDL and minus 4 into x minus 1 because you see it is starting from you know like uh, the x equals to 1 so x minus 1 for the entire length of 3 meter. So now you see you know like at point C where x is equals to 1 you simply put the x equals to 1 then we have minus 2 into 1 minus 1 and since x x minus 1 is 0 so there is no contribution is coming in terms of the moment because you see the point load is there is no eccentricity is there point load is exact exactly acting on point C so no bending no bending is coming due to for this uh, uh, 4 uh, kN load at point C so only there are two contributions are there so we have x equals to this bending moment is equals to minus 3 kN meter. But if you go beyond that point means if you are going up to x equals to 3 then you see we have you know like the contributions equally from 2 kN, 4 kN and the uh, you know like the UDL which is 2 kN per meter. So if you uh, keep the value of x equals to uh, x equals to 3 in this equation then we have minus 6 minus uh, minus 2 into 3 so minus 6 minus you see the x square is there so uh, the 9 square and minus you see this uh, 4 times uh, 3 minus 1 that means the 2 into uh, 4 so 8 is there. So total bending moment which is at x equals to 3 is minus 23 kilonewton meter. So we found the two different values of the bending moment at you know like the different uh, junctions. So at uh, you know like the middle portion we have at point C we have you know like uh, the bending moment that is minus 8 kilonewton meter because the starting point is 0 as we observed and you know like at the extreme corner we have you know like the minus 23 kilonewton meter and since uh, there is a contribution in this bending moment due to the UDL also so we have you know 
as you discussed that uh, always there is a nonlinear relationship that means we have a parabolic sections so if we draw these things by considering those values plus uh, the consideration of this uh, udl in that uh, uh, this uh, bending moment we have you know like the total visualization is starting from zero now coming at this so it is uh, at this uh, point you know like we have you know like the minus 8 kilo newton meter and then we have at the extreme end the total bending moment is there that is minus 23 kilo, uh, this kilo newton meter so this is our bending moment diagram this is shear force diagram so if this kind of you know like the interaction is there we found that wherever the change of uh, this uh, additional load is there or may, that means there is, whenever there is an adrift, adrift changes are there in these kind of loads additional load then always we found that uh, there is a straight contribution is there because of the algebraic sum of the load in this shear force diagram plus there is you know like the since it is a udl part was there so we have you know like the kind of smooth uh, change is there in these kind of you know like uh, the bending moment because at this particular point straight reaction is there of these two load but these you see you know like because of the 2 kilo newton meter up to the 3 meter of length always going up to you know like the maximum value and we have in this particular case minus 23 kilo newton meter because of these additional you know like the components 2 kilo newton meter 2 kilo newton 4 kilo newton and 2 uh, kilo newton per meter of this kind of loading so now you see you know like uh, this was a typical case we would like to discuss again one more case in which a different sense of loading is there that means you know like uh, again it is a combination of load but in that the uh, this uniform distributed load is just uh, distributed for a span of uh, uh, let us say some uh, x meter not for entire length of beam plus there is addition of a point load is there then what will happen so in this case uh, there is an adrupt change is there of a loading beyond a certain the point thus we shall have to care will have to see carefully that how these you know jump phenomena or we can say the discontinuities will come in in the shear force as well as the bending moment diagram so here the case is like that we have a simply supported beam of total length is 16 meter and then in the half of the length we have a kind of loading of a uniformly distributed load which has a magnitude of 4, 400 newton per meter and at the extreme corner that means you see at the middle portion of the beam there is you know like the additional point load or concentrated load is there of the magnitude of uh, 6 kilo newton and then you see we would like to you know like uh, just check that uh, what the kind of interaction is there in between uh, this udl because at the uh, extreme corner of the udl we have a point load so how these uh, this point load as well as the udl will contribute in terms of shear force and uh, you know like the bending moment uh, our interest is that so for that first again we would like to see that how the reactions will come so r1 and r2 if i am saying that these two reactions are there so what are you know like the reactions through which we can say that under the application of these two udl and the point load our beam is entirely in the equilibrium portion so first uh, we would like to see that what the values of these uh, two are so first uh, calculating those values by equating the forces plus the moment we have r2 is 3 uh, 3800 a newton and r1 is 5400 newton so once you have the values of r1 and r2 you can easily find it out those things by e uh, getting two equation one by force balance equation and once by moment balance equation because you see the load is you know like uh, the udl as well as the point loads are there and they equally they will contribute in both of the term force balance as well as the moment balance so by equating these two equations you have the two unknowns so you can easily get uh, those values because the force and moment is known to you as per the distance and the applied point uh, applied force so once you have this r1 r2 then you see you can easily get those values shear force and bending moment diagram because of those whatever you see the reaction forces from which are acting towards the vertical upward direction and the forces the applied forces which is there due to you know like udl and the point load they are acting on the downward direction so now you need to be careful to choose uh, to be choose you know like uh, that uh, how the shear force uh, conventions are there and the bending moment conventions are so now you see you know like uh, as we have r1 which is 5400 extremely at this particular point where only udl is there there is no contribution of the point load only what we have we have a udl at this particular point the starting point of this udl so only the contribution will be because you see this is force is coming in the vertical direction the uh, this force is coming in the uh, this uh, uh, downward direction so we have a positive part and since only r1 is contributing at the extreme end so it is equals to f equals to w or we can say f equals to r1 that is 5400 newton so starting from that then you see now go up to 8 meter so up to 8 meter you see you know like we need to check it out that what will be the contribution of the shear force 
if the first of all the udl is there so if i am taking x what is the component we have you know like the this let us say w kilo newton per meter is there so in this case you know like we have the udl udl plus you see we have the additional point force that is the 6 kilo newton so because of that there is a drift change is there at the extreme corner and since it is a point load is there at the drift change so because of these various this variation is coming because of our udl udl is only applying at this section so you see starting from 54 uh, you know like uh, 100 newton to 2200 newton is coming due to this uh, udl so you know now, now you see you can simply generate the equation by taking x x x and starting from x equals to 0 to x equals to 8 meter so in this section it will be you know like the contribution is there and then it will be you know like the contribution is there from the udl and then there is a drift change is there because of the point load which has a nine uh, or we can say six uh, kilonewton so you see here just uh, 2200 to you know like uh, going up to below 3800 uh, so total is uh, we can say 600 newton is there so it is coming due to the additional part so this con this uh, slant is there because of udl and the adrift change is there because of our point load and then you see there is no force contribution is there at the extreme end corner what we have we have you know like the r2 which is equals to 3800 so we have a perfect we can say the rectangular is there right from this section right from uh, you can say this section to this section there is no changing of load or there is no additional form of load is there so we cannot say that you know like uh, we, we cannot get anything an additional component so there is a straight variation of this shear forces r and this is f equals to minus reaction r1 or we can say minus this 3800 of the total newton forces so this is what all about our shear force diagram but what about, what about the uh, this bending moment so again you see you know like uh, since what we have we have the force contribution is there at the extreme end of the simply supported beam of this is due to the uh, this udl plus we have a point load which is at the center point so again at these two junctions the a and b where r1 r2 reactions are there they are always contributing in the bending moment is zero because these are the junction point and then you see now we would like to see that what the variations are there udl is there for one half portion of this beam so it will contribute in terms of bending moment so since you see the udl is there so we have a you know like the second uh, degree polynomial is there that means we have the square term parabolic term is there so we have you know like this uh, variation is there up to this point and then there is a point load is there acting exactly at the mid portion of this beam so now you know like there is no udl contribution is there so we have a slant is there in the bending moment so you can say that you know like just you can visualize straight where that okay now this is the contribution of udl this is the contribution of a point load so how they will play what will be there since you see the point load is there so we have a linear relationship if a udl is there we have a non-linear relationship parabolic term will come so you can visualize and then by you know like the numerical values you can calculate the what the total ma maximum uh, the bending moment is there or what the variation is there so we can get this kind of you know like the shear this bending moment diagram starting from this to you know like the parabolic term and then there is a slanting uh, height is there so these you know like uh, this is our bending moment diagram this is the shear force diagram and one can easily get those uh, you know like the diagrams once they have a feeling of the interaction of the forces as well as the individual force ap application on this particular beam now you see we, we just move to the new case in which you see you know like we have a simply supported beam that carries a vertical load which is uniformly increases till now you see what we discussed that okay udl is there but it has a constant intensity at all the points let us say if 2 kilo newton per meter is there as we discussed so 2 kilo newton is acting at individual you know like the distances not the variation but here now we have a, a case in which the vertical load is there and it is uniformly increasing from 0 to uh, 0 at one end to maximum at uh, extreme point that is you know like uh, at the 12 meter we can say as you can see in this diagram and that it has a value of 6 kilo newton per meter so now you see we would like to you know like find out that how the shearing will occur and how the bending moment will react due to this particular kind of loading so now we have a simply supported beam triangular loading is there so due to this triangular loading what will happen you see you know like the reaction will be coming the reaction will be acted you see you know like uh, as per you know like the visualization of this particular diagram you can say that at this particular junction we have a maximum value of uh, this uh, reaction at this particular junction we have a minimum value which we need to balance this particular beam under the application of this uh, triangular loading 
So now you see just keep in mind that we have a 6 kN per meter of the intensity and we have the 12, total 12 meter of the uh, beam length. So by considering those first of all uh, same thing that we would like to you know like find out the reaction and we assume that R1 and R2 the two uh, reactions are there at these two points and then you see you know like uh, since it is a triangular loading so we need to find out that what will be the resultant is there of this triangular loading which will be acting at a centered of a triangular part because it is a triangle and always center of mass is at some you know like the centroid point is there. So first of all we need to locate that point and then we would like to find out the reacts, uh, reactions of those things. So first of all the average intensity of this load is 0 at 1.6 at uh, another point. So 0 plus 6 by 2 so we have 3 kN per meter. Now the total load if you want to find it out the intensity the average intensity is 3 kN per meter the total beam length is 12 meter so the total load is 3 into 12 so we have a 36 kN. So now you see we have a total load if you just go for the average loading then we have a 36 kN and now you see first of all again since it is a triangular triangular form is there so you know like always centroid is acting at two third of the distance from one end. So you see if we are taking two third distance of one end so we will find that actually from one end we have a three distance so two we have you know like this to total distance is this one so two by three into you know like you can say just put the total 12 meter so we have the total distance uh, two into four that is the eight meter from one sub one end support. So you see if I if I am asking that we have a total 12 meter one end is this so from here to here the total 8 meter distance or from here to here we can say the 4 distance and the total magnitude is 38 kilonewton. So 36 kilonewton. So now you see you have a perfect visualization of this kind of 4 again I am repeating those things that if you have a triangular loading first you see since it is a triangular form so at one point it is 0 at one point it is maximum go for average one once you have the average intensity of loading multiply with the total load where it is acting. So now you have a feeling of total load. Now since it is you know like the triangular form is there perfect triangle is there. So we know that the center is center is always be there at two third from one end or one third from an another end. So you can calculate that where it is where the location of the center is and once you have the location of the center is you can simply have a feeling that this is the magnitude and this is the location. So now in this case also we have a reaction R1 and R2 at these two points. We have total magnitude 36 kN which is acting at this particular point 8 meter from this distance 4 meter from this distance. So, so now with that we can easily calculate the uh, remaining reaction. So 36 into 8 from one end is equals to R2 into 12 by taking moment at this particular junction R1. So we have this R1 which is 12 kN and R2 which is 24 kN. There is one note you see however the resultant cannot be used for the purpose of drawing shear force and bending moment diagram. We must consider the distribution of load and determine the shear force and this, uh, this uh, you know like the moment at x and x x from the left end. Because you see you know like uh, why this, this thing is there, there is a variation and there is you see we are assuming and uh, we are assuming that though there is you know like the variation is uniform but in actual way you see always it is whatever the displacements are there of the microstructure within that particular or we can say the shear distribution is there it is not exactly that in average way. So we need to check it out that where you see the minimum loading is there or where the maximum loading is there how this de deformation or how the shear forces are you know like playing their key role and how the bending moment will come and then only we can go for the actual uh, this design of the beam. So for that uh, for the sake of the safety always we would like to consider you know like uh, just for the reactions are okay for average but uh, in real moment we need to see that how the variations are there in that way. So now, now you see again we are going with the same, uh, same processor that cut the x x x and at one point. So this is you see the x x x and from starting from this point these are you see r1 r2 which is 12 and 24 uh, kilonewton is there and this is the total intensity 6 kilonewton per meter is there. So consider the section x at a particular distance x is there at x x the intensity of loading you know like uh, which we would we would like to find it out with 6 kilonewton into x is there and then you know like uh, what we need to do here since there is a variation so we cannot take directly as a 6 so what we can do we need to find it out that at a particular distance x what will be the intensity because uh, you know like it is a uniformly varying so if it is a UDL then you can say it is intensity is constant but it is a uniformly varying so first our main intention is to find it out those things so it can be easily find it out by taking the two symmetric uh, triangle. So you see here we have a triangle from AB and this portion and we have a triangle of ADC. 
So by taking is you know like what we have the same angle is there this height and this height you know like it is, it, this, this angle and this angle is same this angle and this angle is same. So it is we can say that there is a symmetrical you know like uh, the two triangles are there. So by the symmetric we can say that W by 6 that means whatever the intensity of W is there which we want to find it out at this particular junction or we can say at B which is W. So, W by 6 is equals to X. This is the total distance by 12. This is total. So, we have this W which is at X distance is equals to X by 2 into you know like the total part. So, we can say since it is X and it is going that. So, it is X by 2 kilo Newton per meter. So, now we have at X distance we have the intensity of load is X by 2 and from that we can go ahead that okay now at distance of this X is there then what is the feasible you know like the loading as well as the kind of uh, uh, you know like uh, these intensities are there. So, in this figure you can easily visualize that kind of part that at this point you know like since it is W you know like W uh, W by 2 W is equals to X by 2 is loading and it is locating at this particular point. So, 2 third of X is there or we can say 1 third of X is there. So, we can find it out that how the shearing will be occur at this due to this particular diagram and then we will extend in a beyond uh, this particular reason. So, by taking that point what we have the average load is nothing but equals to 0 at one point x by 2 which is at the distance of x is there. X, so, total is x by 4 kilo Newton that is the average load. So, now you see you know like uh, once you have the average load you can easily find it out that what will be the shearing part is there in that. So, if you want to find out those things then the total length is nothing but equals to the length or which this uh, uh, this uh, uniformly varying load is there, there. So, we have x by 4 into x or we can say x square by 4 kilo Newton. It is acting the total load is there acting at two third distance of from left distance from from left hand corner. So, now starting from those reasons we have you know like in the final way that the bending the shear forces are 12 minus x square by 4 kilo Newton. So, now you can vary those things with the value of x you can get and bending moment is there into 12 into x minus x square by 4 of a of x by third because it is acting at, at one third of this distance. So, now you have the total 12 x minus x cube by 12. So, now if we have a cubic term. So, a square term is there in a shear force, cubic term is there in a uh, bending moment. So, by keeping those values you can get this shear force as well as the bending moment diagram. So, you see you have a parabolic term right from this way you have a cubic uh, term in this way. So, you can draw the bending moment as well as the shear force diagram of this nature which has you know like the values bending moment at 0 0 at these two point and the maximum is there at the 55.42 kilo Newton meter. Similarly, you see shear force is there 12 kilo Newton at x equals to 0 that means starting point and minus 24 is there at this particular shear force and both uh, are in the nature of the quadratic term because of the square term. So, you see here in this uh, section we discussed about the interaction of the forces that how you know like uh, these uh, if you have a you know like the couple is there or with the uh, this UDL point loads are there and you see you know like if uh, the eccentricity is there or if the angle is acting at angle uh, this uh, force is <coughs> acting at angle then how these uh, you know like resultant forces are coming out from these and what will be the direct impact is there on the shear force and as well as the what will be the direct impact is there on a bending moment. So, now you see you know like in this next lecture again we would like to see the different kind of uh, loading that if we have you know like uh, in that if uh, the additional torque is there that means we have you know like uh, this UDL plus additional torque is there then how they will react uh, on a beam and how we can say that the maximum bending will be occur at a particular these, these locations. So, our main aim is to calculate that what, what are the location where we have the maximum shear force or minimum shear force or what are the location where we have a maximum bending moment so that whenever we design a beam our you know like uh, the design considerations are there based on whatever the analysis is. So, thank you.